Welcome back. Next, we're going to be learning about the differences between implicit and explicit parameters. So we've already seen explicit parameters and we know we do that just using our square brackets here at the beginning of our function declaration. So in this function here, I'm passing in one input parameter and then I'm calculating a number of variables within my function. And then I'm actually returning all of the variables at once um, in a list format. So if we run this function, it's now defined um, and I'm creating an input list here of L. So we can see what that looks like. So this is my input list. We've just used the random operator here. And then I'm going to run some stats against this list L. So you can see I get out all my intermediate values here along the way because I'm returning them all as a list at the end. And we actually don't even need this force return here. That's optional. We could have that without it as well. So you see count of L is 10. So you know we've got 10 values, which makes sense. The minimum of L is two, is that right? Yeah, we see we've got two here. The max is 97, that checks out. And then the average is L, which seems about right here. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. Create a function rectangle area one, and we just want you to calculate the area of a rectangle. I want you to use explicit parameters, so calling them length and width. So have a go with that. And then once you're happy, we'll move on and look at implicit parameters. So we have the option of using up to three implicit parameters in Q. And what that means is we don't actually need to declare them at the beginning of the function using the square bracket notation. And they're there by default for us to use. And these are X, Y, and Z. So in this example here, I'm showing I've got a function declaration here, F4, and I'm going to do X minus one. So you can see here what happens. This is just showing how the function looks. It's X minus one. And when I run it across a list, it's reducing both those values by one. So for example, if this was just one value, that would reduce to nine. The second implicit parameter we can use is y. So just extending this a little bit further, instead of reducing it by one, we're taking y from x and returning the result or here. And you can see we get one. So a three minus two is obviously one. Um, and then finally here, our third implicit parameter is z. So we're doing the multiplication of y times z, and then we're gonna take that away from x. So remember, we have the right to left um, notation. So that's the order of operations, goes right to left. So it'll do this first, and then it will um, apply that to this part here. Okay, so if we run that function here, um, so this is looking a bit confusing. Let's just, you do f6 first of all. So we've got f6, we've got three parameters. So let's say we do um, 100, and three and two, for example. So in this example here, we're multiplying 100, uh, sorry, y is actually three. So what to point out, x will always be your first one, y will always be your second, and z will always be your third. So we're multiplying three by two, which is six. And then we're taking that away from 100 here. And in this here example here, we're passing 10 and 20. And then the third parameter here, we're just passing the result from the previous function here above, which is one. Um, just showing you can use functions as part of the parameter itself. Um, and worth noting here, if you had just put y, for example, that would create a projection because it doesn't understand that you want that to be an implicit parameter. You can only use y after you've used x. So it needs to be in that order. And also worth noting, it needs to be X. You can't use something like A here, you'll get an error. So if you try to use like ABC, for example, it doesn't work, it has to be X, Y, Z. Um, and even though we have these available to us and they're really, really useful because it means you can define quick Lambda functions easily and test them out. When you are putting code into production um, or if you're creating code that others are gonna need to use and, and see and potentially support, declaring your parameters is preferable in my opinion, because it gives an indication to people of what each one is. Obviously, if you name them something that makes sense, so it, it has a, a relevance. So that makes it a lot easier when someone's trying to read your code. Okay, so try this exercise. So this is um, similar to the previous exercise, except in this one, we want you to use implicit parameters. Okay, and then once you're happy with that, 
um, this here section is just showing a comparison. So if this function here, get circle area, is doing the calculation of a area of a circle, so we know we've got our pi here and we're multiplying that by radius squared, um, we're just showing here how that would look differently depending on whether we chose to declare a variable explicitly or not. So you can see here that's returning the same thing. And again, it is personal preference, um, but I would say this one here is more preferable in most situations. Okay, so we've got two short exercises here. So we're asking you to create a monadic function. So remember, monadic just means it's only got one input, or one parameter. Um, and then the second one here is creating a dyadic function, which means you've got two input parameters. Um, and just to note as well, it hasn't mentioned it explicitly here, but, but try doing this one using explicit parameters and then this one using implicit parameters. So you can test out both of those. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.